The first thing that I built is a control for the oven, which consists of a PID controller, two 30 amp circuit breakers, and a 40 amp solid state relay. 230 volt power is supplied to the control box with a 50 amp cord and plug. I mounted the PID at the lower right hand corner of the front face of the control box. Above that is an on off switch for the PID and above that a fuse. The PID can be supplied with 35 to 330 volts AC or DC. I'm supplying it with 230 volts. The PID is basically a microprocessor that will maintain the temperature that uh, I set in the upper display. The temperature reading is in the lower display. This shot shows the internal wiring of the control box. Uh, you can see the back side of the PID, the two circuit breakers that will be connected directly to the heating elements, and the solid state relay. This uh, is a close up of the back side of the PID, um, which shows the various connections. There is a thermal couple connected with red and blue uh, connectors. This is a close up of the 40 amp solid state relay, which is mounted to the side of the box for heat dissipation. The solid state relay is controlled by the PID and it is connected to the heating element uh, and will make and break the circuit uh, for the heating element. The PID will uh, cycle the solid state relay in order to maintain the desired temperature. Now the next thing that I built for the oven is the electric heating element. This consists of about 100 feet of 12 gauge Canthal resistance wire, which I coiled into a 3 8 inch diameter by 70 inch long heater element. In order to do this, I designed and built a wooden jig that would allow me to coil the wire in a controlled manner. The jig consists of a couple of blocks of red oak that I laid out a series of holes on. The uh, four holes at the corners are four quarter inch diameter bolts to hold the two pieces of wood together. The uh, hole in the middle is uh, on the front side of the jig is a half inch diameter hole. The hole on the back side of the jig is a 3 8 inch diameter hole. When these blocks are bolted together, uh, a 3 8 inch diameter steel rod will pass through the larger holes in the middle. I then laid out and drilled about an eighth inch diameter hole uh, that went along the uh, face between the two boards and intersected the uh, larger hole in the front of the board tangentially. You can see the uh, small diameter hole at the top of the uh, the jig. Uh, this is the hole into which the wire will feed and then the, uh, the wire will wrap around the uh, 3 8 inch diameter steel rod. There you can see the, uh, the 8 inch diameter hole. I then countersunk and installed a steel fender washer in the back part of the jig. The purpose of this washer is to force the wire to come out the front of the jig as it coils around the steel rod. Now I tested the jig with a uh, 7 inch long 3 8 inch diameter bolt. Here you can see that I've got the bolt installed with the uh, Canthal wire uh, started around it. This is a, uh, a view of the completed jig with the wire inserted. Uh, this shows the jig clamped to the table with an electric drill attached to it. For the test, I used about one foot of Canthal wire. You can see the jig uh, ready to go here. After turning the drill on, I ended up with a nice tight coil. This coil is about one inch long, and uh, this is pretty much what I'm hoping to get uh, with the entire 100 foot length of uh, wire. This shows the overall setup as I'm getting ready to wind the six foot long electric heater element. You can see the black 3 8 inch diameter steel rod coming out of the back of the jig and the uh, electric resistance wire coming in from the right. This is another view of the, uh, the setup. The thin white line that you see in these photographs is actually a, a small diameter fiberglass rod that I have tucked behind the 3 8 inch diameter steel rod so that when I get to the end of the steel rod, the fiberglass rod will flop over and let me know that I've reached the end and that I should uh, stop the drill. The resistance wire that I used for this project came in a loose coil that was about a foot in diameter.
To make sure that the resistance wire would feed freely to the coiling jig, I built a turntable from a yardstick and a Lazy Susan bearing. I centered the coil of wire on the turntable with clamps. During the initial setup of the turntable, I found that the Lazy Susan bearing allowed the wire to uncoil due to the springiness left in the wire. Therefore, I flipped the uh, turntable over and uh, just let it rotate on the uh, cardboard underneath it. The friction between the turntable and the cardboard was enough to prevent the coil of wire from unraveling itself. You can't see it in this photograph, but I put a 90 degree bend in the resistance wire uh, just inside of the jig. Uh, this allowed me to bring the resistance wire out of the front of the jig and insert it in the chuck of the drill. This effectively fixes the end of the wire to the 3 8 inch diameter steel rod uh, and causes the wire to wrap around the rod as the drill turns the rod. As the wire wraps around the rotating rod, the jig forces the wire to wrap in a single layer. At the same time, the newly laid wrap of wire forces the previously laid wraps out of the front of the jig along with the 3 8 steel rod. Okay, now we're ready to see how the whole system works. When I start the winding process, I'll give the drill a little kick and then stop it, just to make sure that the end of the wire stays in the chuck and that everything is going in the proper direction. At this point, I'm not sure everything's working properly, so, so I slow the drill down a bit. You can see that the uh, coiling actually takes place fairly quickly. I keep glancing over at the turntable to make sure that the wire is feeding properly. As I'm running the drill, I push in gently to make sure the wire stays coiled tightly. You can see that I've already got about four feet of the heating element coiled, and this has only taken me about 20 seconds to do. Notice the resistance wire feeding into the jig from the right. I know I'm getting close to the end of the 3 8 inch diameter steel rod, so I'm keeping an eye on the white fiberglass rod that will tip up when I get to the end. Now I'm getting pretty close to the end of my coil of resistance wire, so I'm worried that uh, the end is going to become snagged on my turntable. In a few seconds you'll see me stop and walk over and release the uh, resistance wire from the turntable. You can see that there's only about one foot of the 3 8 inch diameter steel rod still sticking out the back of the jig. Okay, there's the tail end of the resistance wire flopping around. And there goes my indicator that I've reached the end of the 3 8 inch diameter steel rod. Now I'm going to straighten a little kink that's in the wire and finish up the line. This is what the heating element looks like coming out of the end of the jig. Notice the nice tight uniform coiling. The coiling jig took about 20 minutes to build and cost about $10 total. The turntable that I mentioned earlier I built for another project so I already had that. The coiling jig worked pretty much as I expected. However, when I opened it up, I found that the uh, resistance wire eroded a groove in the metal washer. 
I probably could have prevented this if I had an assistant uh, hold an oily rag on the wire just before it went into the jig. When I took the jig apart to get the heating element out, I found that the coiled wire uh, acted like a spring that was wound up and it tended to uh, uh, unwind when I released the jig. When the heating element relaxed, uh, it expanded in diameter and the heating element came off the steel rod very easily. Here you see the final product.